Hi everyone, today we are talking about my spring knitting plans. Hi, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting. And like I mentioned in the intro, today's video is all about my spring knitting plans. In today's video, I'll be reviewing my winter knitting plans and what I completed or didn't complete and how those plans will roll over into the spring. I'll then be sharing the patterns that I'm interested in knitting this spring as well as showing you some yarn that I have for those projects and swatches as well. So let's get into all of the talk about spring. Spring is one of my favorite seasons by far. I just love how it tends to be warm. <laughs> I say tends to be because I live in Massachusetts where sometimes spring is not always very warm, but it tends to be warm. The flowers and trees start to bloom and it's always really beautiful to go outside, start going on outdoor walks and just enjoy the transformative time of both like the weather and the seasons and daylight savings time is very exciting to me to have some extra daylight hours in the afternoon and evening. So it's always really fun to take that excitement of the season into my knitting and crafting plans. Spring is definitely a big shift for me. You know, fall and winter I tend to pair together and then spring and summer I tend to pair together in my mind. So transitioning from winter to spring is always a good time to introduce really new stuff and new colors, new patterns and projects and I'm excited to share those all with you. Before we dive into the projects I'm interested in making for the spring, I do want to review what I said I would make for the winter season and and go over what I actually ended up completing and what I didn't end up completing. If you haven't seen my winter knitting plans video, it will be linked down in the description box and I use the winter months as January, February, and March and going into spring I'll be planning these projects for April, May, and June. The first project I wanted to complete this past winter was the April Cardigan by Petite Knit and I was able to finish that. It was actually a carryover project that I had started I think last summer and it went into the fall plan and went into the winter plans and I finally finished it this past season so this is checked off and will not be carried over into spring of course I am looking forward to wearing this cardigan in the spring I think cardigans are great transitional pieces for layering when you know it might be cooler in the morning but hotter in the afternoon and can take it off to reveal the warmer layer underneath the next project I had planned for the winter was the Ollie sweater by Marita Harvey and I was able to knit most of it at this point in time of filming I I am still finishing it. I did finish one sleeve, the body's done, and I have just started the second sleeve as of today. So I am trying to get this done before my spring season officially starts, you know, at the end of the month, and I think this will be done by then. So I'm counting this as completed, um, but right now you can see that it's not. But this is a very wooly, warm sweater. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get too many wears out of it in the spring, but we might get some chillier days where this will be a nice, comfy oversized sweater to throw on. The October sweater by Petite Knit was another project that I wanted to complete in the winter and I also was able to finish this. I knit this in very early winter in January and was able to finish it pretty quickly. I think it was a December to January project. I've worn this a decent amount of times this past season so glad to have this done and also will not be carried over into the spring. The last winter project that I have finished is the La Lu shawl. I wanted to knit this pattern by Sari Nordland and oops I'm holding it backwards. <laughs> The Lalu Shawl by Sari Nordland. I wanted to knit this and was able to get some yarn and knit this up this past season. It's a really nice layering shawl. Small scarf, small shawl. I think it's really comfortable to add as an extra layer around my neck or just like a pop of color in this really fun poppy red. Now I do have a few projects from my winter plans that I have started but not finished and I know that I won't be able to finish them before the spring starts at the end of the month. So I will be carrying over my Aurelia pullover. This is a pattern by Sari Nordlin and it has all over cables and it's a very intricate pattern so it definitely takes a long time to work on and a long time to complete. You can see I still have both sleeves to do but I am done with the body and yeah I do have my cable needle stuck in here for easy access. Uh, so this will become a spring project that I will try to finish early in the season. Again, with these wool sweaters, I don't know how much wear I'll get out of them at this time of the year, but 
I would like to finish earlier rather than later, you know, closer to summer. Definitely not going to get anywhere out of this. So we'll try to finish the Aurelia pullover. I know it's kind of slow going, so I don't really have a deadline in mind, but I will prioritize it. Another project I'm currently working on but haven't quite finished yet from the winter is my Berlin scarf. And I don't recall if this officially made my winter plans list. I think I had it as tentative and I did end up casting it on. You can see it's pretty long. I still have a bit of length to go and I also still need to add the fringe. And this is another project that is very winter specific, so we'll definitely need to prioritize it. And again, don't know if I'll get to wear it, but that's okay. It'll be ready to go before the next winter season. This is the length that I'm working with right now. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's so like cozy and squishy. And yeah, that's the length so far. I definitely want it longer. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna make it yet. Working on this, carrying it over into the spring. And I do have one more winter project that I have started and not made significant progress on, and that is my Stick Season sweater by Rebecca Klo. You can see I've just barely started the front of it. This is the back of it, and I've picked up for the front, you know, completed the neck opening, and I'm still working on this front section here. I don't know why, but I don't feel super motivated to work on this project at this moment in time. It might be knowing that this is also something that I might not get too much wear out of in the spring, so I feel less motivated to work on it right now. And it's also the color, you know, it's very dark and definitely like a fall or winter color. And the spring, I definitely feel more inspired by lighter colors, just with, you know, the sun coming out and classic spring palettes tend to be a little bit lighter. So I don't know why I'm just not feeling motivated to work on this. I might put this aside and pick it up next fall, which would be new to me. I have never like purposely put aside a project to pick up later. If I start something, I usually motivate myself to finish it within like a two to three month period and if I don't finish it that quickly or in that time period I sort of consider it an unfinished whip or an abandoned whip that I might consider frogging. I don't want to frog that project at all. I definitely want the finished piece and I'm definitely enjoying knitting it. I'm just not in the mood to knit it right now so unsure if that'll get carried over into the spring. Right now I'm gonna say that it's not and it's not gonna make my spring knitting list. And there were a couple other projects that I wanted to knit this past winter but just never got a chance to. And the first one was the Harlow Sweater by Petite Knit. I had set aside some Filcolana yarn for that project and just never got around to casting it on. And I don't really wanna carry that over into the spring as well. It just feels a little bit too wintry. And again, I'm just not feeling too motivated to work on it. So that's not happening in this season and didn't happen last season. Similarly with the Harlow Hat by Andrea Mowry, I had some some beautiful yarn set aside for that. Just never got around to casting it on. I could see myself casting on this brioche two color hat at some point in the spring, maybe if I'm looking for a fun, entertaining, small project, but right now I am not officially putting it on the spring knitting list, but it's there in the back of my mind if I do want to work on it. All right, now let's get into the spring patterns. This is the exciting stuff. I feel like the way I'm approaching the spring knitting projects is a little bit different than how I normally approach my seasonal knitting plan videos. I feel like this year I'm just feeling, you know, more go with the flow. And I also am not really looking at patterns this spring that are super seasonally appropriate. Specifically this year, one of my knitting goals was not to knit a lot of warm weather knits like tees and tank tops. I just don't find I get a lot of wear out of them. I did make a lot of them last year and I just felt like my time would be better spent making warmer weather knits like long sleeve items. So although I am gonna have some tees in the spring list today, or one tee, I think. My whole spring knitting pattern list is not tees and tank tops. They're not like super warm weather fibers or warm weather knits. A lot of them might be considered very like fall and winter knits or colder weather knits because that's just what I want to make. Because of that, I think my plans will be a little bit different from a lot of other knitters that you'll hear from this spring, but hopefully that's okay. You know, I'm just focusing on what works best for me and what I am most interested in working on. I have three categories of patterns that I have been looking at for the spring and they're kind of surprising. The first category is cardigans. There are four different cardigan patterns that I've really found an interest in and really want to cast on and 
it's kind of funny because I notoriously, at least for myself, take a really long time to knit cardigans. I don't finish too many of them and I definitely find more enjoyment knitting pullovers, but I just feel like my wardrobe could use a lot of cardigans and there are some great patterns out there that have really been inspiring me. The first one is the Kutar Wrap Cardigan by Sari Nordland. This one, it just looks really beautiful. I did make the Kutar top last year or the Kutar tank. I don't remember the actual pattern name, but it was the summer knit and this pattern, the Kutar Wrap, features the same lace motif. I really enjoyed knitting it and I just really like the idea of a wrap cardigan. I think it has a lot of styling potential, obviously wrapped with the little ties, super cute, but I think there are ways to wear this cardigan as well untied and I love how the lace motif adds a lot of texture to it and I'm just looking for more tops that can be like outfit making and have a little bit more excitement than being just plain stockinette in a solid color. So this is a DK weight knit but it's knit on five millimeter needles and the recommended gauge is 17 stitches per four inches or 10 centimeters so it is a little bit lighter of a gauge compared to a traditional DK weight knit let's say on four millimeter needles so the fabric is airier it's drapier and the recommended yarns in the pattern are knitting for olive merino and knitting for olive soft silk mohair held together so I actually have those exact yarns for this cardigan and I actually happen to have the same exact colors that Sari Nordlin used in her sample piece so these are both in the color putty this is knitting for olive merino it is a fingering weight 100% merino wool this is the soft silk mohair it's a lace weight 25 gram ball of silk and mohair also in the color putty it's just a beautiful and one of my favorite silk mohairs to use so these are the two for the wrap and I did gauge swatch already. I actually ended up gauge swatching on five and a half millimeter needles just cause my gauge tends to be tight and I was able to meet gauge. So this is the exact gauge that the pattern calls for. You can see the airiness of the swatch. You can kind of see through it just a little bit and it definitely has a lot of drape and a beautiful halo from the mohair. So I'm really excited to cast on this wrap cardigan. I'm interested in the construction. Well, A, because it's a cardigan, B, because it's a wrap cardigan, so it is gonna be a little bit asymmetrical, and C, because it kind of has a set-in shoulder construction, although it is seamless. It looks like a really interesting construction to give a really nice tailored shoulder shape, and I think it's gonna be a really fun knit. On a similar note, another pattern I'm looking forward to knitting is the Darling Wrap Cardigan by Pernille Larson. They are the designer for the Knitting for Olive book, which I do have a copy of. So this pattern is in the book, but you can also get it separately if you want. This is an all over two by two ribbed negative ease wrap cardigan. You can see it's kind of tight fitting and definitely has a cropped fit where it sort of can tie off at the waist, or of course you can knit it longer if you want to. I am looking forward to knitting this cardigan, again, to just have a different silhouette in my wardrobe. And also I'm kind of curious about the construction. This is actually knit bottom up which might sound scary maybe I'll regret saying that I'm excited to try it but I'm excited to try it and see how it knits up I'm excited to see how the negative ease and the 2 by 2 ribbing like fits on me I do know that I really like wearing my camisole number five which is also a negative ease top with 2 by 2 ribbing and I think it just looks really classy and I think that this wrap cardigan will just be a really nice layering piece or outfit making piece in my wardrobe the yarn that I'm interested in using for this pattern is Sorella Yarns Classic DK. I pre-ordered some from their Winter Ballet collection in the color Audition, which is this very dark black, and it's kind of like a blue black, so depending on the light, you could call it a very dark navy, or you could call it a black. It's a 100% superwash yarn, and it's a tonal, so it should have some very slight tonality in the coloring, which I think will look really nice in this sort of streamlined silhouette of a cardigan. The next two patterns I am interested in knitting this spring are both from the Sorry Northern book, Softly Timeless Knits, which I have just gotten a copy of and I'm really excited to dive into and knit a lot of patterns from here. They are also both cardigan patterns and the first one is the Asobo cardigan. And this one actually comes in two different styles. It's one pattern, but you can choose to make a longer length with a waist tie and pockets, or you can make a shorter cropped length that doesn't have the pockets and doesn't have the little belt. And I'm really interested in making the crop version. I really like the fit of it. It kind of looks like a boxy, 
the silhouette, but if you add that in with the crop style, I think it'd just be a great layering piece and an outfit making piece. And it features, you know, a stockinette body, but the sleeves have a really fun cable pattern. So I think it would be an engaging knit that isn't too involved, but enough texture and excitement to keep me motivated to work on the project. This is a worsted weight pattern, and I similarly have some pre-order yarn on the way to me from Woolberry Fiber Co. that I would love to use for this project. I was able to get my hands on their new worsted base that's 100% Rambouillet wool, non-superwash, and the color I ordered it in is called It's Bread, which is like a brown red color, and I think it would just look gorgeous in that cardigan. I think that red is just going to be stunning and really excited to cast that on as well. Also from the Sari Northern book is the pattern called Nilo, which is another cardigan, yes, and this is an all-over cabled cardigan. It's a raglan and features a crew neckline, and I just think it looks really beautiful. It obviously has a lot going on. I think it's going to have as much complexity as the Aurelia pullover that I've been working on, you know, with the raglan shaping that includes all of the different cable charts for both the sleeves and the body. So I'm thinking of casting that on after I finish my Aurelia just to continue working on maybe like a longer term all over textured project. That pattern is a DK weight pattern and I would love to use this Knit Picks palette that I have in my stash. This is in the color Mist, which is a very light gray color. It's like a solid single color. I don't really see any heathering or like marling within the yarn. This is a 100% Peruvian Highland wool, non-superwash. It is fingering weight, so I would hold this double to knit the cardigan. And I think that this solid gray color would just show off the cables really well in the pattern. So yeah, lots of cardigans. We'll see if I get through them. Maybe I'll change my plans as we get through the season and say, I can't knit this many cardigans and pull in a pullover, but surprisingly no pullovers are on my spring knitting list. I will now go into the one t-shirt pattern that I am interested in knitting this season, and that is T number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. So I've really liked this pattern ever since My Favorite Things posted the like first photo of it on Instagram. I think it looks very polished. It has a really fun construction of like a saddle shoulder, so it has some cool like lines that go down the arm, and I just really like the long short sleeves on it like they're big and baggy and kind of go down to the elbow and just the boxy fit it just looks like a really cool pattern both to knit and to wear i'm also really interested in the neckline construction it seems like it has that very polished folded neckline that has i don't know how the construction is done because I don't have the pattern yet, but some sort of like sewn down neckline that I know My Favorite Things has also used in camisole number no. nine that just looks really clean and crisp. And so I'm excited to cast that on this season as well. I do know that there is a very similar pattern to T number no. one by Ozetta called the Lakes T. It looks like a very similar construction. I have no idea if they are knit the same way, but I feel like the final result looks very similar. The one reason I am choosing the My Favorite Favorite things pattern over the Ozetta pattern is strictly the neckline. You can see the main difference in the Ozetta pattern. It uses a basic ribbed neckline, whereas My Favorite Things uses that folded neckline that I like better, and I do want to purchase that pattern so I can learn how to do that. So for me, that was the deciding factor between those two patterns. The suggested yarns for T number one are very new to me. It is a fingering weight knit on 3.25 millimeter needles and uses two yarns held together. I was able to grab the suggested yarns on one of my trips to Norway. So this is Gepard yarn, Wild and Soft. This is a 60% merino and 40% tussa silk yarn. It's fingering weight, I think I said that already. And then I also have Gepard cashmere lace. This is a 100% cashmere lace weight yarn. And these two are held together and I think it's gonna be a very fun combination of fibers and gonna make a really cool fabric. It is fingering weight, so I am anticipating this project to take me a bit of time. I was able to gauge swatch already, which is very exciting. You can see how those colors knit up together. A little bit of marling, but nothing too high contrast, which I really like. I think from afar, it creates a really cool dimensional fabric and I can already see like the drapiness of the fabric. It feels like 
very brushed from the cashmere but also you know you have that drapiness from the silk and I think this will be an interesting t-shirt to see how I like wearing it. I know I'm skeptical of knit t-shirts because I find that they're too thick to wear when I want you know a t-shirt but maybe because this one has longer sleeves it'll be more of like a cooler weather t-shirt. Um, I know, we'll see how it goes. This will be like another test of if I think a knit t-shirt is worth it or not. And now into my last category of patterns that I'm looking forward to knitting this spring. And this is totally shifting gears from what I normally knit. If you have been following me, you guys know I'm pretty exclusively like a garment and accessory knitter, but I'm getting really excited about knitting some home accessories and crocheting some home accessories. I know that this whole video is titled Knitting Plans. I've been talking about knitting, but there actually is gonna be some crochet this season Season, I've been inspired to pick up my crochet hooks again. I would say I'm a pretty like intermediate crocheter Like I know the skills about how to make things but I wouldn't say I have like good technical knowledge about crochet I just don't do it that often but lately I've been just really inspired by crochet granny squares and granny square projects and some home projects so let me share those with you. I guess first off I'll share then one knit home project that I am going to be working on this spring and that is the Stella quilt cushion by Laura Penrose. It's this really beautiful sort of heirloom quilt motif cushion or pillow cover that is entirely knit out of garter stitch squares. It's a great way to use up leftover yarns or mini skeins or advent yarns and lately I've been accumulating a lot of mini skeins. I've been grateful to be gifted a lot of mini skeins from some yarn brands that I partner with and so I do have a whole set of mini skeins from Sorella Yarn. These were their winter tonals that are no longer available right now but they will come back next winter and I have wound them up and started my little Stella quilt cushion. So you can see here the gist of the construction. This was the first square that I made and I just finished the second square yesterday. You pick up stitches, oops. You pick up stitches and then eventually you'll get the whole square for a 20 inch by 20 inch pillow. The main color that I'm using is Sorella Yarns Classic DK in the color Townhouse that I had frogged from my Whitmore cardigan. And I am holding these fingering weight mini skeins double on four millimeter needles for this DK weight project. So this will be a fun project to work on. I'm getting really excited to see how the star kind of builds. I am doing motif number two, which uses the eight point star and it's just gonna be really fun to work on. All right, now we'll get into the crochet projects that I've really been loving. <laughs> and again, they all sort of fall into the inspiration from having mini skeins. And for me, mini skeins, they're really cute. I really love them, but I just don't see them as being used in a lot of garments that I like to wear. I tend to like unicolored garments or solid color garments. Things with a lot of different colors just don't really appeal to me. But what does appeal to me are beautiful granny squares made with a bunch of different colors, specifically specifically made out of curated palettes. And I also have a lot of gift giving opportunities coming up this spring and summer. I have a few friends getting married, so we have bridal showers and weddings to go to. Some people are having babies, people are purchasing homes, and so there's a lot of opportunity to give gifts, and I think a lot of opportunity to give homemade gifts for the home. And I've been really interested in more pillow covers, including the Stella quilt cushion. One crochet pillow cover that I really like is the Astrid pillow by Mallory Crawl. This is a granny square pillow cover that you make out of puff stitch grannies. So in the pillow cover, I believe there's 10 different minis that you can use on a five millimeter crochet hook. So you do hold the minis double and then you connect them all together with a worsted weight yarn. So let me show you the minis I'm interested in using. These were just sent to me by Sorella Yarn. It is their new spring palette. And sorry about the glare. Let me try to hold these so you can't see the glare. All right, I took those out of the plastic packaging, so there should be no glare anymore. So in the Sorella spring tonals, there are 15 colors total, so I only need to pick 10 of these to make the pillow cover, and I think it'll be really fun to pick out which colors I use. So a beautiful mini set to pick from to make the Astrid pillow. You do need a worsted weight color for the joining color and I thought just a plain white would be good. So I went to my local yarn store and picked up some Barocco Ultra Wool. <laughs> the price tag's covering the label. But this is 100% superwash wool. This is the color Snow and it's a worsted weight. So this is 100 grams and there's 219 yards in here. So together, 
I think that'll be really cute and I love the little progress photos of this granny square pillow cover. I'm just really excited to you know, start making these little puff stitch squares. It's gonna be so fun and really fun to map out all the color combos. And I think it's gonna be a great gift. And I have one more crochet project that I would really love to get started. And I don't know if this will be completed in the spring because it's a pretty big one. And it's the Huga Burst Blanket, also by Mallory Crawl. This is a very large DK weight crochet blanket made out of sunburst granny squares. And I was inspired to make this as I was looking for, you know, different crochet home patterns to make. I just really love the idea of variegated crochet granny squares and then all connected by like a solid cream color. I think it just looks really nice. And although the Ravelry paid pattern features the granny squares made out of different colors, you know, similar to the Astrid pillow, there is a free version of the pattern on her blog that features one single variegated color per granny square. And I really love the finished look of that specific blanket. So that's what I'm going to try to mimic. And this project was mostly inspired by the fact that I was gifted a very large quantity of hand dyed yarn from Arcane Fiberworks. Absolutely beautiful colors and I have just a handful of them here. So these are 100 gram skeins and it's their sock weight yarn. It's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon blend and a whole variety of different colors that really match my personal color like preferences. Like there's a lot of blues and pinks and just like really fun kind of pastel-y colors. And the Hugo Burst Blanket, if you use that free pattern, there are nine different variegateds in there and you make 11 squares per variegated skein and then you arrange them. There's a whole schematic on how to arrange them. So I think regardless of what variegated colors you use, I think the blanket will coordinate because like you have so many repeats of the different colors and I think it's really fun to create any sort of color palette with whatever variegated yarns you have. So I'm looking forward to starting that. I think it's a lot different than a scrappy granny square project, which I also have going on with some scrap yarns for a big blanket, but that project doesn't have a deadline for me because I never know when I'm gonna end up with enough scraps to finish a whole large blanket. But with this project, I already have the yarn in hand, so it has like more of a completion on the horizon, like I can picture finishing it because I have all the yarn ready. I will need to get a connecting color. I'll probably just pick up some undyed fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks and maybe pick another like solid color fingering weight yarn for an extra border. But I think that'll be like a fun kind of change of pace project as well. And they are DK weight granny squares, so I think they should go pretty quickly. I think joining them will be the hardest part, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And that's pretty much the end of my spring knitting plans. You know, that's pretty much everything I plan on making this season. My planning lists are always hard to complete. They're always longer than what I could ever reasonably complete in a span of three months. So I know I'm not gonna get through all of them, but it's always fun to sit down and go through what's inspiring me and what yarn I'm really excited to get on my needles and hooks. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you're planning on making this spring. If there's any new techniques or new crafts you're gonna try like I am with the crochet projects. Would love to hear from you and looking forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye.